Hi, everyone. By now, your children should be very comfortable working with number lines to solve finding the difference problems or figuring out what is missing or left over. Working with number lines helps to build strong number sense foundation for subtraction, as well as important mental math skills. When they've built this foundation, it can be handy knowing a stacking method, as they can be faster to use on paper, especially as numbers get larger and more abstract. I'm going to show you three different methods, partial differences with borrowing, partial differences with negative numbers, and the standard algorithm. I am going to show you how they are similar and how they are different. Each one of them has its benefits, but they all have their quirks too. First up, let's look at partial difference methods. When you use these methods, you are subtracting in parts, and then you add those parts together to find a total. The borrowing version requires that students get used to expanding numbers, lining up place value parts, and borrowing if there's not enough on top. The advantage of this version is that students can clearly see the true value of each digit. The disadvantage is that it can take a while, and it can be messy to use with larger, more complex numbers. However, it can be used in partnership with the standard algorithm. The standard algorithm also uses borrowing and it also requires that students start by subtracting the ones first before moving on to larger places. If they have learned the partial differences method first, they will better understand why the borrowing tricks for the standard algorithm work the way they do and will be less likely to make mistakes, like this one. The common mistake here is believing that the amounts borrowed from the tens and the hundreds columns only have values of one. But once students are ready, they can subtract more quickly and efficiently with the standard algorithm. Let's take a look at one more method, partial differences using negative numbers. An advantage of this method is that you can start solving on any side of the equation. A common mistake that many students make when using the standard algorithm is starting on the left when they need to start on the right. With this method, if you would like to start on the left, it will not affect the outcome. Furthermore, students do not need to expand numbers like they did with the other method, but they do need to be aware of the true values of each digit. Watch. Now, instead of borrowing here, they learn to do this. Yep, that's right. 20 take away 70 leaves you with negative 50. After subtracting the final column, students total up the partial differences. 200 plus negative 50 is 150, plus six is 156. Now, the obvious disadvantage to this method is that you need to teach your child about negative numbers. You should draw and count numbers using number lines that go into the negative. You might use the analogy of an elevator going underground or a thermometer with temperatures dropping below zero. Just know, however, that negative numbers are not in the BC school curriculum until grade seven, so there's no need to push it. That being said, if your child is up for an interesting challenge, they might really enjoy this method. So there you have it, three common methods for stacking and subtracting. Partial differences with borrowing and the standard algorithm complement each other quite well. And partial differences with negative numbers is an intriguing alternative. Because none of these methods are perfect, make sure you choose the ones that make the most sense to your child. With time and practice, they will become skillful and confident. <laughs>